Hello everybody. I want to continue with the second part as promised the half bridge amplifier and I will go to a couple of configuration scenarios and things you have to take care of. In the first instance it looks like a very very simple um, amplifier stage however the devil is in the detail. So if configuration is not done correctly and so on you will not get it working so I will walk you through that I will show you my setup here what I did configure and I will provide you also with some performance analysis so there are two there are three stages here the driver stage the signal stage to the driver the amplification stage okay there are four and the matching network series LC network to your load. A very, very important step, very important um, installation for a working half bridge. Let's start with the driving stage. So, hope you can see that here I have what you normally don't need to do is I have two inputs here. One input is the high side, this is one above here and one input is the low side. Reason being will become clear in a sec. So I have literally here on top the non-inverted side and on the bottom I have the inverted driver stage side and double up the chips there's TC4420 CPA on top the 6 amp and we have TC4429 CPA inverted on the bottom they're complementary they're also 6 amp, 6 amp. Why do I need two input stages? The half bridge in the configuration is literally like a swing. So literally both channels are simultaneously switched on. However, it cannot be, otherwise you will have short through. So you would have to in integrate a so-called dead time between the high and the low side. But I don't have that here, that comes in a later stage, but what I have here, I want to show you, I use a two-stage signal process here. The first signal is my primary signal, which gives me the clocking frequency. The second one is my pulse generator, which I trigger then and which I add then for delayed pulse. Very important, that gives me possibilities for pulse width and so on for the channels to compensate for the lack of dead time I have and you will see it becomes apparent that has a huge impact on the performance. If you see here let me get that running again you see both channels you see the non-inverted side on, on top and the inverted side on the bottom let me run that for you now, I can now adjust the settings by play changing the settings on the pulse generator. It allows me to change width and so on on the channels and changing performance as well as you can see here. And here I opt for performance that means high skew and also lowest current very important so that is literally something you would not need to do if you have this chip so this is a so called IRS218844 this is a half bridge driver which a configuration possibility for the dead time however it's not only this one chip you need you need a couple of more chips because it's a it has a logic input so you would have to change your analog signal into digital signal. It becomes much more complex. However, this chip replaces the complete input stage. Of course, you still need a signal, but you would not need this one either. And of course, it has a very small footprint. But let's go to the next settings. So I have as example here the 218. 
for four but not to show you here's the scenario I'm not interested I want to show you here that is your setup for the half bridge straightforward you have both end channels so that means the train is connected here to your positive rail so the source goes here to the um, train on a low side and from there the source goes down to common you connect the load in between there and of course to common so that thing looks very very simple it is very simple however to get this one working afford us a little bit more legwork but we get we will get to that stage so this is my amplifier side you see the two MOSFETs the IRP2450 um, it's not a very powerful one only 190 watt so each side so you see here that is my positive rail goes to the high side here on the left side here my negative rail which goes to common and here you have my input sides so I have the high side goes over here and the low side goes to the second um, MOSFET the cap capacitor in, in the middle um, to compensate for, for ripple on a line but that's straightforward and here you see the output now the important part is in this scenario directly connecting to the load it will not work either it will burn through right away so that you have almost a shortage in the network or you get nothing out at all so both scenarios are very frequently happen, happen and you can read it on a forum usually everybody suffers from this kind of problem solution to the system solution to this kind of scenario is first of all the dead time to implement that's one scenario but the second and much more important um, scenario is adding a matching LC series tank which reflects your frequency on your primary secondary for the load how are we can do that very very simple so we have here a cap here I use a cap a couple of in parallel and this one for a fine adjustment here on the side connected to an inductor here and this one is then connecting to your load on one side and the other side goes out to the common of your power supply you have on my tutorial web page you have um, the link to frequency calculation very very simple so the main frequency here is between 750 and 800 kilo cycle that means I have to add that up how much cap how much capacitance do I need how much inductance I measure the inductance as 1.6 micro Henry so that means I need to have 25 nanofarad here to give me this kind of frequency and then you will see that has a huge impact. I have started now my setup <coughs> optimized for highest frequency and lowest current. At the moment it's at around at 20 30 volt. So I have um, on um, on our oscilloscope here yeah, I have at the moment 86 volt here. Um, measure it from here from this probe and as you can see when I when I short that it's actually reducing it and, and the current goes down to zero so let's keep it as that and let's bring it up a bit so at the moment I have 50 volt and on oscilloscope is 310 volt sparks come up as you can see when a spark is coming up it's remove it's reducing the Q and of course in that case also the current item at the moment at 400 milliamp I'm going further up and go up to 100 volt it's about 0.6 amp that's 547 volt 
So 100 volt, 110 volt, almost close 1 amp. As you can see, it's already sparking out quite strongly. So at that moment, when it conducts here, the current drops to almost 100 milliamp, 1 milliamp. can trace it first, so that's 120 volt at the moment and 0.9 amp. Please bear in mind, I have two MOSFETs, literally they're both sharing the load. And I can measure a little bit the temperature at the moment, 14 degree, 15 degree. They're running quite cold. I have to admit here in the garage it's freezing cold. We have at the moment 3 degree, so that is helping as well. But they are not getting hot at all. So one has 190 watt, so it's 380 watt both can share. However, I have not varnished the copper stripes here, so I will not go higher than 200 volt, otherwise I would have to risk that I get flash overs. So going up to 150 volt, going up to 200 volt, now it's one amp so that's 200 watt now it should come up now it's conducting and the current drops to 250 milliamp so from 200 watt it drops down to 50 watt if you want i see also on the oscilloscope it drops down to 250 volt so that's going to get very hot. Now I can increase it a bit. Interesting enough is, I can increase the voltage now. It doesn't make any difference. Current doesn't increase, it stays at O2. That's a very interesting phenomenon. So an increase in voltage has not any impact at all at that current state when there is a contacting um, pass existing. So that concludes my experiment with the half bridge and I will move on to the full bridge. Thank you.